Hi, I'm Lisa Shaw here at the Beat Retreat, and I'm interviewing Jason Forbes, who's the uh, managing director of ZBox. So, um, first of all, Jason, why don't you tell us why does the world need ZBox? Well, if we start with the consumer, um, it's interesting that about 40% of people with a smartphone or a device are now using that device while watching TV every single day. Uh, one of the biggest issues, however, for, for TV networks like Bravo and others is many of the times that they're using that device, it's got nothing to do with what's on screen. Uh, they're emailing, uh, they're chatting about kind of separate topics, etc. And so from a, an audience engagement perspective, and also from an advertising perspective, obviously not having a, a consumer who's actually watching what's on screen is distracted by other other kind of sources becomes problematic. And so the whole premise of ZBox is really to provide a compelling one-stop shop where all of these different experiences while people watch TV can be brought together in a unified experience. So um, tell me how adoption is going so far. I know the, that ZBox came from the UK, came to the United States uh, in September. So how is adoption going? Can you tell us how many downloads? And uh, do people feel they actually have the need for this deeper second screen experience? Sure. So we launched at the end of September. Uh, we surpassed a million downloads in a little over three months. That's the fastest pace in download history from a second screen app perspective. So we really feel that we've struck a chord with consumers who are hungry for a more unified experience. You know, they want to kind of engage with their favorite shows, their favorite characters, the talent on that show. And I think Zbox, in terms of really addressing the need for richer discovery, better interactivity, more information about what you're watching on the screen, kind of a greater ability to actually engage socially and also to buy what you see in screen. Those five kind of pillars have really kind of underpinned why we think it's struck so well with consumers in the US so far. To me, the real question is, I have to say, I was a very early adopter of ZBox. Jason and I met because we were, he was at Time Warner and I was at NBCU and we both thought it'd be a great product to bring to our companies. When am I going to start seeing my own friends in ZBox? So I see a lot of my NBCU colleagues and you on ZBox, but what do you think ultimately, I mean, maybe that's just the social piece, but I would love to see my friends, and maybe my friends are too old. But uh, is, is that an issue, or w how do you think that's going to get fixed? No, it's a great point. You know, we're actually, you know, on, on a monthly basis, we're doing about a half a million uniques. So it's a, it's a large number. What we found actually is by better segmenting our, our messaging to specific audiences, you're more likely to find people like you on Zbox, right? So for some of the larger shows with NBC, for example, like Take It All or the Golden Globes, we've actually found, you know, people with their friend, like clusters or families of friends, actually kind of congregating on Zbox. So over the coming weeks and months, you're going to see a lot more of that is picking specific shows and really messaging to the audiences and the social networks of those shows to make sure when you come on, it's not only a great integrated experience with the main screen TV, but your friends are hanging out there as well. Okay, so the big one is coming up um, on Sunday, There's the Super Bowl. So that must be, a, you know, a big haven for you guys. So tell us what you got planned for the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, it's interesting. For the Super Bowl, we're almost doing an anti-game, right? There are, are dozens of second screen apps who are going to offer richer and richer levels of sports statistics. And that's great. And to be clear, the Zbox experience is going to have a great sports stat experience. But much more importantly than that is we're focusing very much on the event itself, the commercials, the, ha the halftime performance by Beyonce and team, etc. So Nini Leaks, as you know very well, from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, is actually going to be the, the featured host on Zbox. He'll only be there on Zbox offering a live discussion forum, chat with directly with her audiences so anybody who downloads the ZBox app can actually chat with Nini while the game is on talk about some of her favorite topics not necessarily ZBox related and the game itself we think this can be a great way for the more social side of the Super Bowl people who care about the commercials etc to have a fantastic experience while watching the game um, Nini Leaks I, I come I work at Bravo and Nini Leaks has a huge following and is never one to not have an opinion on a subject so I think she'll be great um, Tell us some of the challenges you had. Uh, UK established very early, did very well. What are some of the challenges you faced bringing ZBox to the United States from either the programmer or advertising? What are some of the unexpected uh, differences? Yeah, so I think coming a little bit late to the to the the U.S. from a launch perspective meant that you know for for many programmers what what was or what is understood as being social TV you know that definition has kind of been set and actually for ZBox as I mentioned before ZBox is just one of five pillars discovery information interactivity and commerce are the other four and so ZBox offers a much richer experience and so in many cases we're re-educating consumers to say hey social is fantastic but for people over 35 social is often not that important. 
important. So educating consumers that there's a lot more to do, as in your example just provided, okay? If my friends aren't there, what else is there to do? And if you can give me a great experience about the show, around interactivity, etc., then that's going to keep you coming back for more. So that re-education and helping consumers understand there's great other things to do has also applied to TV networks as well. And as they, I think as they get exposure to the Zbox product and understand how it works, okay, they get pretty excited about the art of the possible in terms of really firmly integrating the first and the second screen. So the two are enhancing each other where one plus one equals three. Let's talk a little about the advertising model. Um, Second screen, the second screen advertising is still evolving. You know, I think um, print has some sort of established models, but I think the second screen um, TV apps have very limited advertising. So what's your business model? Is it advertising? Where do you see it going? That's great. So I guess two kind of core parts to, to Zbox from an advertising perspective. First of all is what we call show sponsorship. So any advertiser can actually sponsor a show in conjunction with that TV network. So for Bravo, for example, for Life After Top Chef, American Express may decide to sponsor that show page. And that's a great way outside of the ad breaks actually to enhance the um, Life After Top Chef experience that can be brought to you or sponsored by American Express. That's one kind of key piece, sponsorship. The other critical piece we just launched last week is what we call TV Sync. So anytime an American Express or a Toyota or a Frito-Lay ad shows, we can actually sync the two so that when the 30 second spot is on the main screen, you have a synchronized Zbox ad on the Zbox platform. And that's fantastic for advertisers because it brings the reach of TV with the power of the internet in terms of richer interactivity. So during that Amex ad, for example, you know, users can actually enter their email address, they can enter into a competition, they can Amex sync or other. These are all great ways to take advantage of the Zbox platform, but in complete sync with, the, with, with TV. And I think that that combination is actually exciting a lot of agencies and advertisers around what we can do going into the upfronts. How important is um, e-commerce as a piece of that, either tying into you know, American Express and then you can buy what you see, or as a business model itself, do you really believe that people are going to, you know, it's the Jennifer Aniston sweater question, see and buy stuff, and is that part of your business model? It's definitely a secondary part of our, our business model. Like I think that there's a, a very strong belief amongst many that if you can give contextually relevant merchandise, that people, consumers, will absolutely lap, lap it up. So the key is relevancy. If you're being barred as a consumer by irrelevant merchandise, it's not going to resonate. But there definitely are, from our own data, about 15% of people have said that they watch TV and often would like to buy the merchandise they see during the show. So back to the Jennifer Aniston sweater example. So ultimately, we see commerce as an important part, and we'll develop that with our partners like NBCU, Viacom, etc., to understand what's the right cadence and the right amount of merchandising, but making sure it's always contextually relevant. I think with American Express, we had some interesting early results. I think we we're on a journey with them and others to really understand what's what's the right model. But from a from a conceptual perspective, there's clearly a kind of a, a subset of the US audience who does like that idea, so we look to explore that further. I know in the early days of when Zbox was, um, you know, coming to the United States, you know, when you were working at Time Warner and I was working for NBC owned by Comcast, there was a lot of interest in, from the distributors in Zbox. And I know you just announced uh, that that um, that there's a, you know, the, rem the remote is built in for Comcast subscribers. So what is the benefit and why are you doing that? So I, I think a couple of key pieces. Now, first of all, from a distributor perspective, you know, for example, with Comcast, they have their Xfinity app. And I think the whole attraction for a distributor, Zbox, is it's a horizontal model, meaning that you know, people don't have Comcast friends or NBCU friends. They have friends, which transcend distributors and TV networks. So the whole attraction of Zbox is it's a great way for Comcast to actually to connect with a broader audience who may not be Comcast subscribers. I think the other kind of, and that's what we call a T model. Therefore, Zbox covers all all networks, all shows, and all distributors as well. I think the other kind of key piece is, is making for a richer experience. So as you just mentioned, with Comcast, any Zbox user who's a Comcast subscriber can now change channel with their Zbox app, meaning it acts as a remote control. And we've seen both in the US and the UK, this is a killer feature. You know, being able to throw away your plastic remote, at least for channel changing, and use Zbox mean, again, it just bakes in, it loads in richer features and functionality, so you can use Zbox not just to discover content, but when you've discovered, you can click on the show and away you go. You can actually change channel using the Zbox app and your TV will obviously kind of go to that show. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Where does Zbox fit in with other second screen television apps, be it, you know, our Bravo Now app, you know, networks own apps, 
Get Clue, Miso, um, uh, or um, uh, like a TV guide, which is grander. So where do you see fitting in that um, eco sphere and where do you think who's going to win? I, I think you know what, one of the one of the phrases we kind of play with is what we call the app graveyard, okay? And, and this being the premise that you know, and certainly not with regard to Bravo, obviously, but other apps, you know, that people they get heavily promoted, people download them, and then particularly for show specific apps actually realize that the app only works when the show is on right so you download the app and you go well this only works for that specific show and the challenge with that therefore is you get all these apps on your iphone or your other device i'm sure you and i are exactly the same and you never really use these apps so those apps are great for the show but the reality is that people change channels and when they change channels you know between different networks or different shows you need to have what's called a kind of a horizontal app and that's what zbox is it's a horizontal app that works across all shows so how the two coexist as we describe it as a T model whereby what Zbox is great at doing is funneling audiences with our partners to those shows so for example when you go to life after top chef on the Zbox app you'll actually see the life after top chef app if you've built one being heroed so ultimately what we're doing is we're driving audiences reminding them of these really cool um, vertical show or network specific apps that can be brought you know brought and kind of reinvigorated so it's a great way that the two can coexist and what we've also done is we've actually taken functionality from show or network specific apps and represented that in Zbox. So it means it's almost like a, a freemium or a canapé model, whereby you're exposing audiences who otherwise might not have downloaded that app to say, hey, there's some really great vertical richness here and actually drive more casual fans to become super fans via the functionality baked in in Zbox that's come from that channel or show specific app.